When thinking of microcontrollers for projects that require access to lots of fast peripherals and powerful processing capabilities, many reach for the teensy lineup of boards. But there's a downside. It's not that customizable. Now to further explain, imagine wanting to control a string of RGB LEDs that have a brand new protocol. Now most libraries that could write to them would have to function in either one of two ways. First, there could be a function programmed in assembly that carefully times when pins get toggled using a combination of register writes and NOP instructions. But this is nearly impossible for chips that change their clock speeds, or for beginners. The second way is to use a timer that generates interrupts at precise intervals in order to signal a pin state change. But this can interrupt other important tasks and takes away processing power from other things. That's where we get the Raspberry Pi Pico. Now it's very different in this regard. The chip, which is fully custom designed chip from Raspberry Pi, called the RP2040, supports the creation of various state machines. Now these state machines are able to control and toggle pins and also contain their own dedicated hardware to keep track of states and also buffers. This means that dedicated hardware units can be set up to handle much of the I.O. required for SIM peripherals on its own, thus freeing the CPU for other tasks. Now the Pico can be programmed with either C or C++ from their SDK or in MicroPython and also has IDE support from several IDEs. Now getting into some of the specifications. So the RP2040 microcontroller contains a dual ARM Cortex M0 Plus processor with a flexible clock that runs up to 133 MHz. It contains 264 kilobytes of RAM and two megabytes of onboard flash. It has 26 multifunction GPIO pins, as we can see here on the underside, they're all labeled. It has up to 2 times SPI, 2 I2C, two UART, 3 12 bit ADCs, and 16 PWM channels. It also has 8 programmable IO or PIO state machines split across two instances for custom peripherals. It also has drag and drop programming support over USB mount storage, an onboard temperature sensor, accurate clock and timer that's on the chip and also ARM SWD debugging, as you can see here on the bottom three pins. So now that you know what the Pico can do, here are some other suggestions for beginning projects to get used to the board and its features. I think the first and most important one would be a blink where you just toggle the LED on and off. So that's a pretty simple one. Implementing the WS2812 protocol to control a string of RGB LEDs. Talk to several sensors over I2C and SPI, and then finally use direct memory access or DMA to transfer data to and from an SD card. Now DMA is also integrated very tightly into this, where you can take data coming in from a different sensor, let's say over SPI, and then use that with the programmable I.O. state machines to then fill up a buffer and then send that to a different peripheral device. Now, to learn more about the Raspberry Pi Pico, such as pinouts, data sheets, and the SDKs, you can visit pico.raspberrypi.org to learn more. Now, Hackster will also be releasing a getting started guide for the Pico as well, so stay tuned for that project and any other ones from Hackster. <laughs>